if you're at all familiar with Apollo and you're someone who's sitting there ticking the tick boxes, adding your leads to the list, and you just want to automate that crap away, I can show you how to do that with Axiom.ai, a no-code browser automation tool. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. On page, I have the list of leads that I've generated using the search in site Apollo. Next, I want to automate this in the browser. I'm going to show you how easy that is. I'm going to open up Axiom. I've got my template already set up. I'm going to show you how that's done. It's really simple to configure. You just add your URL in. It's all set up for you. I'll also take you through how to build it yourself. But before I do that, let me show you the power of automating the browser. I'm going to click Run. Axiom's going to open up the desktop runner. Look, no hands. This is the magic of Axiom. I never get tired of watching this. Axiom is going to select. It's going to select the page, and it's going to open up the list menu. Clicking on, if I show in pointer, clicking on this icon here. It's going to click Add to Lists. It's going to type in the name of the list, and it's going to click Confirm. And then Axiom will go on and page through the rest of those lists, depending how I've set it up, to keep adding them. And I can use that box on as many different lists as I want just by adding the template. I'm going to stop the bot now. Okay, this template is available on our website. If it's not there yet, just email me, alex at axiom.ai, and I'll share it with you. It's super simple to configure. Let me show you how to configure this template. First of all, we have the go to page. All you need to do is put the URL of the page you wish to automate your lead list adding or something like that from. Um, and just set up the search, add the URL in here. Do remember, and you probably know this already, that Apollo does limit the amount of leads you can page through at any one time, so you will need to filter the list down. Okay, next up, and the only other bit of com configuration is the name of the list you want to, to um, add your leads to, and that's done in step 2.6, and you can just hard code it in there. I've just typed, you can see the name of my list there. Okay, that's it for configuration. Next up, I'm going to just talk you through a bit of troubleshooting. If you do experience any issues with this template, I suspect it might be to do with clicks. Now, internet speeds vary, we all know that. Sometimes the page will load slower and a, and a click element, for example, could fire before the button is loaded on the page. So we have a step called wait. And we use that, like I've done here, to wait for some content to load on the page. Now, you could probably optimize that wait and reduce it, but I've just put it in a five second wait there. For example, you might need to add a wait before this click to allow it to appear. I've got a very fast internet speed, so it works for me. It should work for you, but if you see a click misfiring, why not try a wait? If you're also trying to figure out where to Enter the name of your um, the list, do it here. And that pretty, pretty much it, cover it for, for troubleshooting. You may at times need to reselect buttons and change the clicks. Well, in a second, I'm gonna take you through configuring the bot for yourself and how you can build it for yourself. I'm gonna show you some of the top tips, how you can select buttons just by the text in them. And you may need to do that. You may need to change that if you're using Apollo in another country and if, they, if they've localized the buttons to your language. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. I'm going to show you how you can build the bot from scratch yourself without any code, so keep watching. Finally, I'm going to run through how you can make this bot for yourself. I'm just going to talk you through step by step what I did. And you can just take that knowledge. You can start from scratch yourself. Okay, so the first step I started to was an interact step and the go-to page. That's where I put my URL in. And then I add another interact step. Why haven't I just continued adding my sub-steps into that interact step? And by the way, sub-steps are, are the steps that interact with the browser. Well, there's a good reason for why I've used two interact steps here. That's because I want to loop through the actions, but I don't want to reload the page. So if I'd have put all of my um, sub-steps into here, these actions, Pardon me, and I looped back here, the bot would have um, reloaded the page and because I'm paginating, it would have lost its place. Because let's say I've page to page two adding my lists, 
and I'll refresh the page, it's going to go back to page one. So that's why I've separated this template into two interact steps. And you'll notice on this interact step, I've removed the go to page. Okay, enough about that. Let me talk you through the sub steps I've used in the second step. First of all, I do my click. Now I just selected this button here so I could bring up this menu. Then I did something rather clever here to click the select page. Let me show this cool feature of Axiom. I'm just gonna scroll myself out of the way. I'm actually on Prime there. And I'm gonna press custom. No, I'm not. And I'm just gonna move myself smack into the middle. And you can see here, I, I clicked on use text, element text inside of HTML. And I typed in the text in the button. Because that text is unique, I can just use that to click. That makes it really simple. Of course, if you're, um, version of Apollo is localized, then you will need to localize these selections to your own language. Okay, next up, I added a short wait, and that was to basically allow that pop-up to appear. So, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. That was to allow the ticks, of course, to all be done down the page. Okay, next up, we click the list element. One thing I noticed here on our desktop runner, the button collapses and hides the text. So I didn't use the same text selection trick. Here I did something different. I selected on the list. I did custom again. I just want, and then I used the attribute selector because I know that's going to probably be unique. I press complete. I press confirm. You don't have to press confirm. I just want to see if that would open it up. And then what I noticed, you get the add to list. And to do the add to list, I added another click. And again, I did the text selection trick that I showed you earlier. So once you click that add to list, a pop-up opens. And the awesome thing I noticed about this, and it's all handy in a lot of browser automation, is that the um, cursor started on focus. It was in the input. That means we can just enter the text that we want in there, the name of the list without having to select the input. So I, I added an enter text step. I put in the, the, the value that I wanted. Okay, and finally, one of the useful tricks that I use in browser automations are recording key presses. Then I just recorded a return to submit the um, key press. Then I could probably either add another return and that will probably close it, but I've actually used a click. Again, I used the text trick, press confirm, and I just selected it. And again, I used the, the text. So you will, if you're looking to localize this, obviously you would need to do that to your own language and press complete. Okay, cancel. I'm just going to collapse that. Now that's the end of that interact step, and I've started another one in here. And what's in, so that obviously would also go away once I've collapsed it. Let me open Axiom up. This is the pager. Now I should probably, I won't, before I add this as a template to our store, I'm gonna probably like label some of these fields so that'd be more helpful. Some of these other steps, I mean. So this clicks on the pager down here that will let you paginate. And then finally, this is our looping instruction. So this, this jump step does the looping and it jumps back to step two and repeats the adding process because this would have gone to the next page. And you can set the, the amount of pages you want to cycle through here. It's quite simple here. So you could do 12 or you could do 100, etc. And that's how you can build the bot for yourself. It's very simple, all done without code. It's a matter of just building your steps up, replicating the actions you do in the browser. So if you want to build your own automation for Apollo, give it a go, or indeed for any other application in the browser. Awesome.